be any art lovers. Everybody bring a computer tonight? If you got a cell phone with you, that's one. Depending on what kind of watch you have, that's going to be another one. Because computers are everywhere. They've gotten cheap, they've gotten small, and they're readily available. And one, one uh, result of this is that they are able to improve existing things we've already got to make them better and cheaper and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm, I'm all good with that. I like these kind of practical side effects. But there's another result of what happens when things get uh, less expensive, when they get smaller, when they become more available. Um, and it means they start showing up in all sorts of places where otherwise there'd be no compelling reason to have them, except for what is my favorite reason for doing practically anything is because, because, because it's fun, because it's interesting, it's because of whatever reason pops into your head. And so, lately now, we have seen uh, small computers and electronics show up in fashion. Now, wearable computers per se aren't that new. In 1966, Ed Thorpe and Claude Shannon built a wearable computer about the size of a pack of cigarettes that let them calculate the odds for a roulette wheel. This is some serious science. This is chips for chips. <laughs> now, what makes art so valuable is that it's not about the practical. Okay, so a poem by, by Yeats or a painting by Mondrian or or the music of Bach. It's not going to help you fix a flat tire. It's not going to help you cook a, a decent meal. But it'll help you have a different experience of a world in which you have to cook dinner or fix flats. So what's interesting to me about the, the availability of wearable computers inside clothing and so on is that it's not driven by practical reasons, but it's, it's, done by, it's motivated by art and by fashion. People such as Leah Beakley and Diana Eng and uh, Susie Patchen are creating things that are visually interesting and, and, and clever and geeky as well. They're artists and they're designers and they're hackers. And they're doing things uh, not so much for the practical mind. They get to explore things. They'll think of things um, that, that the merely practical mind you probably wouldn't think about. And they're aided in all of this by the availability of cheap, friendly electronics. So in 2005, a professor of interactive design wanted to make electronics more, more accessible to his students. So he started the Arduino project, which provides flexible hardware and software for prototyping things. And uh, Leah Beakley is responsible for the Arduino Lily Pad, which is a small, it's about two inches in diameter uh, microprocessor that you can sew into clothing. And there are equally small sensors, lights, and, and buzzers, and things that can detect sound and motion. And the extra cool thing is that you can attach wireless components to this as well. So your wired outfit can now talk to other wireless things. Uh, like your phone or your laptop, of course. But this idea of cheap and uh, easily available uh, electronics can be applied to any number of things, such as furniture, books, household items. So as you move about this, this, this wireless environment, you have automatic interaction. You have a network of things. And so you don't, for example, always know when it's time to pick up some milk. Now, putting smarts into the ordinary and innocuous also means you never think about donning your computer garb. You just get dressed. These are outfits by Diana Ang, and they're fashion. Now, they have lights and buzzers and batteries on them as well, but they also work as art and they also work as fashion. And as you move about in these kinds of clothing, these sensors can react and respond to your, your environment, changing shape and color and translucency and so on like that. So you can, you can build fun, interesting things with, with these kinds of, of devices. But throughout all this, there's a tremendous amount of information that gets generated. There's this ambient data that just comes about. How often do you move your arms? Well, what, where do you get the most light? How much noise is around you? So suppose you were able to, to track all this and to store all of these things as you went, up, went about. So people tend to measure things that are familiar, the things that they've already decided are important to them. But how do you know what's actually important? How do you know that you're actually tracking the, the right things? It turns out that it's now become easy to track everything. So Picasso says that computers are useless, they can only give you answers. That's completely wrong. The best art provides a focused experience, a willfully focused experience that enables you to get a new view on this world. And we can get that from our network of things and the serendipity of play. Storage is cheap, and the analysis of even large data sets is extremely practical. What might you learn about yourself? If you could detect trends and patterns in just your average everyday movements and, and, and actions. So wearable computers and geeky chic fashion, they give us what the best art gives us. 
a new view, a new way to think about ourselves. Thank you very much. Woo! Catch me at halftime. I can give you a demo at my uh, presenter's table after the break.